Did you know it's possible to reverse the effects of heart damage? Start down your road to a healthy heart at Preston Memorial Hospital's Cardiac Rehab Center. We started cardiac rehab here at the hospital, and I have come a long way. Now I can shower, make my own bed, do laundry, cook. I'm looking forward to getting back to being my own self and happy to have my life back. The Cardiac Rehab Center at Preston Memorial Hospital. We put our hearts into making yours stronger. Happy New Year! Kent and Melissa with Delano's Furniture and Mattress. Celebrate the New Year with us by saving big on our double-sided Made in West Virginia mattress sets. Yesterday's quality meets today's technology. A mattress you can flip. It'll last you year after year. Come, Come experience, experience the Delano's difference. difference. The Delano's difference. The Delano's difference. We also have adjustable beds. From a simple switch, troubleshooting a problem, a new service, to that backup generator that you'll need in times of emergency, Blake Electric can handle all your electrical needs. They have the experience and knowledge to do it professionally and safely and do the job right the first time. There's been an accident. The emergency has left you with physical trauma and legal issues to deal with. The bills are piling up, and you're overwhelmed. Where do you turn for legal representation? Hi, I'm Paul Eastep. And I'm Steve Schaefer. We're attorneys practicing right here in your home county of Preston. Centrally located on West Main Street in Kingwood, just across from McDonald's, the offices of Eastep and Schaefer are an easy drive from anywhere in Preston County. You don't have to go outside Preston County to hire a lawyer with the know-how, the experience, and the knowledge to represent you fairly in a serious personal injury matter. Call us at East Eppin Schaefer at 329-6003 or visit us on the web at www.eastepschaeferlaw.com. Become part of the family at Preston Family Pharmacy. It's not just their name, it's their philosophy. They treat you like family. Whether you've just left the hospital or a routine checkup, make Preston Family Pharmacy your neighborhood pharmacy your next stop. The friendly professional staff at Preston Family Pharmacy will make sure that you get the time and attention you deserve for all your pharmacy needs. Preston Family Pharmacy is currently accepting all patients. Preston Family Pharmacy, Route 7 across from Walmart, Kingwood. They'll take care of you like family. Brown's Mill Grocery invites you to stop by for anything you might need. If you're looking for a quick bite, Brown's Mill has buffet-style pizza, fresh subs, and cold drinks. Fill up your tank and your car's tank, too, with quality gasoline. Snacks, cold drinks, gasoline, anything you might need, you'll find at Brown's Mill Grocery. Brown's Mill Grocery at the corner of the Dogtown Road and Route 92. We look forward to seeing you soon at Brown's Mill Grocery. From humble beginnings, Stone Paving has emerged as one of the premier paving companies in the region. Stone Paving has been doing business for nearly 20 years and provides asphalt paving services to residential, commercial, and highway customers. They're pre-qualified with the West Virginia Department of Highways and have a history of meeting the most demanding schedules. Stone Paving has equipment and personnel that can complete any project and are committed to providing quality service at a competitive price. When you're planning your next project, call Stone Paving. At the Landing Dental Spa, our goal is to provide quality dental care and a relaxed spa-like atmosphere. Dental chairs with heat and massage, warm neck wraps, and personal TVs make your appointment as stress-free as possible. Located off the Pierpont exit, now accepting new patients of any age. Call 304-594-2200 today and visit our website at www thelandingdentalspa.com to schedule an appointment. The Landing Dental Spa, a healthy smile with peace of mind. Ed B, do you know why I stopped you? Well, your sticker is dead, wires are out your, coming out of your tires, and I heard your brakes squealing from way back yonder. We need to get to the tar ladies. Get in Back into the castle once again for Preston Knight Boys Varsity Basketball. Steve Blake alongside Terry Cochran high above the floor here as the Knights warm up for a uh, contest with Buchanan Upshur. 
delayed a little bit due to snow, but trying to get the schedule back on track. And uh, this one will be our next to last uh, Castle telecast of the season. Terry, it has flown by. Yes, it has, Steve. Um, it's been an interesting year all the way around for the Knights. Um, well, coming in, everybody knew that uh, new coach Paul Koontz had a rebuilding task that was monumental. And there's no other way to say it. There, there wasn't one brick stacked on top of another. Uh, the castle was, was down to the bare floor. Um, this season has had its ups and downs. Uh, we've had some games that I thought slipped away that were disappointments that, that could have been won. Um, there have been some games that I thought weren't going to be won, but they were kind of character developing for the team and team building. Um, we found out who wanted to play, and, uh, you know, it culminated in a pretty nice road trip up to Wheeling where the uh, Knights took on the Wheeling Park Patriots, gave them everything they had and, and more, and came out of there on Wheeling Park's, um, uh, not their senior night, their Hall of Fame night, uh, with a 4.64 to 60 overtime loss. But uh, if ever there was a moral victory for a team, I got to believe that, that that's a turning point uh, for this group of players. I know Coach Coons was ecstatic uh, on the coaches' show uh, about the progress that some of these youngsters are making and the fact that uh, as a team, they are coming together and they're learning at this point finally how to win. And, you know, in high school ball, Terry, it's all about what happens in the regular season as a buildup to postseason play because you go into the sectionals. If you, if you win, you move on. If you lose, it's one and done, and you're out. If you win, at least you get a couple more games. And that's really what he's pointed towards, and the sectional road's going to be a very, very difficult one. If things go right for Preston, they'll get to play Morgantown in the sectionals, and that's first. And it, it, that's if things go well. If things go awry, then they're probably going to uh, play North Marion, then finish on the road with Fairmont Senior and University where they started out, then go right back and play University again in the sectional, and that's an awful tough way to, to end a year. So hopefully Preston can do what they need to do and as he explained it on the coaches' show, it revolves around uh, conference standings. And Preston and Buchanan, Upshur, the Knights and the Buccaneers waffle back and forth between third and fourth here, trading places throughout the season. Preston wants to finish in third place, get the better seed, and in all likelihood the opportunity at that point to play Morgantown High. Uh, in the first round of the sectionals because I think uh, Coach Koontz believes he has a better chance to pull off an upset uh, in that contest. Let's go to the floor right now for floor announcer Karen Smith and the introduction of players in our national anthem.
change in the starting lineups for uh, Buchanan tonight as Austin Bowen gets a start tonight over uh, Dawson Lilly. And it is senior night here at Preston High. We're going to see some of the seniors come out on the floor tonight. Jake Live and Good, number 42. Looks like we're going to see Alec Goff start tonight. That's a classy move by Coach Koontz to let some of the seniors get a start. Yeah, I think uh, I think both coaches are probably intent on uh, uh, giving the due to the seniors that uh, are team leaders uh, for this this whole season. Uh, and I think both of these teams recognize that. 21, Justin Motes came out. Now number one. That's Matt Allen. Number three, Andrew Lance, probably the leading scorer on this night team, along with number 42, Jake Lavengood. Round out the starting five. So let's put the seniors out on the floor, give them a little reward for the hard season that they put in. And let's play some basketball. Yeah, get this one underway and uh, let them have their way with it. First-year coach Paul Coons winding a season down here. And uh, head coach Travis Foster for Buchanan Upshur trying to build um, something of a, of a routine and build a program uh, down at Buchanan. And uh, he's, he's working hard on that. A uh, little mixed success for both of these teams. I think Buchanan might be a little bit ahead of us in terms of team building, but in terms of athleticism and desire, I think the Knights match up very, very well here and have an opportunity uh, to get the win tonight. White hair and uh, live a good jump. Preston comes away with the tip, and we're underway. Nice move by Jake Live and good. Down low as he worked his way between two defenders. Gets the ball up on the hoop. Scores the first two points of the ball game. He had to put some muscle into that right at the start, Terry, and that's a good start for Big Jake. It would be nice to get him on track early as the Knights pull back in that 2-3 uh, matchup zone. Times it looks like almost a 1 3 1. Shot from the outside. Rebounded by Buck Hannon. And a call going to go, go against Preston's Andrew Lance. And that was a nice effort by uh, Holden Edwards for Buck Hannon to get in there, get the second chance opportunity. He doesn't get the basket, but he's going to the line for the first free throws of the evening. Back come the Knights, cross the timeline. Lance will take one from outside. They're only going to give him a two on that shot. Talk about getting things on track. We definitely need Andrew Lance to have a good shooting night. Buchanan looks low. Dribble drive down towards the blocks. That was Heatherly. Now we get it down to Live and Good, back in. He kicks it out. <laughs> Quick step by number 21, Justin Motes. Turnover, Knights. A couple nights will come to the scoring table getting ready to come in. Looks like Corey Piles and, and Monty Rebello will be coming in pretty quick. Yeah, Knights more in a 1-3-1. One, one. 
trying to limit the outside shooting of Buck Cannon. Bowen steps on the out-of-bounds line under his own basket, turns the ball over to the Knights. Good defensive play down low on the blocks by our Knights to seal him off. Good job by Monty Ribello to pick up that loose ball. He got it into Live and Good, and Live and Good just takes it right to the hole. Ribello was chomping at the bit to get in. He's been a breakout success over the last five games, and the junior shows a lot of leadership uh, qualities that the Knights will need going into the future. Nice box out by Ribello. Causes Bowen to come over the back. Pick up a personal foul. Ball back to the Knights at the five minute mark here in the uh, first period. They find Live a good down in the hole, surrounded by blue shirted Bucks. He loses it. Out comes Buck Hannon on the run. Rebound for the Bucks. Now a little dribble drive, a little fade shot up off the rim, no good. But they retain possession. Out rebounding the Knights at this point. Another second shot attempt by Buckhannon. They come down with the rebound, trickles off one of the Knights' toes out of bounds to the Buccaneers. Now we get a call. Did the inbounder step on the line maybe? No, it looks like they called 44 for Buck Cannon with a push. I don't even have a 44 listed. So. Knights get the advantage of that. And we'll look for the uh, mysterious number 44 and see if we can get you a name as things go along. I'll give uh, the Buccaneers credit for this, though, Terry. At least they used the white ink for their jersey numbers. Yeah. Good rebound by Corey Powell's up on the rim. No good, but the put back by Live and Good. And with that, the Knights take an 8-1 to one lead, slowly stretching their advantage here. Preston's Lady Knights played the uh, defending state champ Fairmont Senior Polar Bears uh, last night. And honest to gosh, I think Fairmont uh, has an advantage because they use the stealth ink for their numbers. <laughs> you can't read it from three feet. <laughs> little give and go down on the baseline and score it <laughs> that was white here his first basket of the evening Knights work it around the perimeter Lance is going to take one from outside in and out had the range just didn't stay in the hole Sure, what we're going to get here. Cutlip put the ball up on the glass. Looks like that might win. Might have went against Jake Livengood underneath. Be his first personal. Now they call out on number four, Corey Piles. Just the second team foul for Preston. And a nice response going back the other way as Piles gets the put back. Yeah, Ravello missed the layup, but Piles was right there to lay it back in. A couple putbacks now for the Knights. 
Another near steal by Andrew Lance. Got the ball down deep in the blocks to 25. Or that's 34. Cutlip. And uh, Matt Allen had no choice but the foul. Ten five in the favor of the Preston Knights here on senior night. Good drive by Piles. All he found a cutting live and good who posted up strong right at the edge. Saw him, got the ball into him, and up strong went Jake live and good. And those entry passes are just getting better and better with each game, Terry. Little Euro step by 34. I thought maybe they'd call a walk. Is, is that what that is? I, I thought they just called that traveling in the old days. Yeah. <laughs> Euro step. I'll have to write that one down. Had to call it something because I thought it was a walk too. Now we get a steal, turnover, and Allen – Commits a personal foul. Let's just a little say it was an NBA-like move. Yeah, okay. Heather Lee will inbounds. Gets it to Shepard. He'll set the offense for the Buccaneers. He's going to take a three from outside. Nothing but net. Grayson Shepard. Tightens the game up. It's now 12-8 in favor of the Knights. Good first quarter so far by Preston. Another, another turnover, but the official gets in the way. He's part of the court. And the Knights got it right back to live and good. Lays it up on the glass. Just missed it. He'd like to have that one back again. And now he gets, commits a foul on the other end, and they'll get the and one. Jake Livengood, a little frustrated that he missed that layup. Can't allow Jake to get in foul trouble deeply here too early. Twelve ten. Time running out here in the first period. Oh, Piles tried to get it into Ribello. A little strong over his head. Turnover Knights. Rebound right back up and in. And right now. That is the part of Buchanan's game that is killing the Knights. Second, Second chance points. Piles will take one from long range. No good, but Livingood cleans it up. Jake on a roll here in the first period. Clock winding down to zero, and we come to the end of one. Slow start for the Buccaneers, but they uh, come on strong in the late going of that period. And it's a 14-12 Preston advantage. The Knights have led it all the way, but only by two as we go to the break. Terry and I will be back right here on Hometown TV with the start of second quarter action right after this. The Wound Healing Center at Preston Memorial Hospital offers care to patients with wounds that have not followed the normal path or time frame for healing. Our goal is not only to heal your wounds, but to help prevent further wound problems. We work to educate you on why you have a non-healing wound, what you need to do to heal it, and what you can do to prevent future problems. The Wound Healing Center, inside the new Preston Memorial Hospital. Call today to start the healing. 304-329-3348. Happy, Happy New Year. Year! Kent and Melissa with Delano's Furniture and Mattress. Celebrate the New Year with us by saving big on our double-sided Made in West Virginia mattress sets. Yesterday's quality meets today's technology. A mattress you can flip. It'll last you year after year. 
Come, Come experience, experience the Delano's difference. difference. The Delano's difference. The Delano's difference. We also have adjustable beds. From a simple switch, troubleshooting a problem, a new service, to that backup generator that you'll need in times of emergency. Blake Electric can handle all your electrical needs. They have the experience and knowledge to do it professionally and safely and do the job right the first time. There's been an accident. The emergency has left you with physical trauma and legal issues to deal with. The bills are piling up and you're overwhelmed. Where do you turn for legal representation? Hi, I'm Paul Eastin. And I'm Steve Schaefer. We're attorneys practicing right here in your home county of Preston. Centrally located on West Main Street in Kingwood, just across from McDonald's, the offices of Eastep and Schaefer are an easy drive from anywhere in Preston County. You don't have to go outside Preston County to hire a lawyer with the know-how, the experience, and the knowledge to represent you fairly in a serious personal injury matter. Call us at Eastep and Schaefer at 329-6003 or visit us on the web at www.eastepshaferlaw.com. Become part of the family at Preston Family Pharmacy. It's not just their name, it's their philosophy. They treat you like family. Whether you've just left the hospital or a routine checkup, make Preston Family Pharmacy your neighborhood pharmacy your next stop. The friendly professional staff at Preston Family Pharmacy will make sure that you get the time and attention you deserve for all your pharmacy needs. Preston Family Pharmacy is currently accepting all patients. Preston Family Pharmacy, Route 7 across from Walmart, Kingwood. They'll take care of you like family. Brown's Mill Grocery invites you to stop by for anything you might need. If you're looking for a quick bite, Brown's Mill has buffet-style pizza, fresh subs, and cold drinks. Fill up your tank and your car's tank, too, with quality gasoline. Snacks, cold drinks, gasoline, anything you might need, you'll find at Brown's Mill Grocery. Brown's Mill Grocery at the corner of the Dogtown Road and Route 92. We look forward to seeing you soon at Brown's Mill Grocery. From humble beginnings, Stone Paving has emerged as one of the premier paving companies in the region. Stone Paving has been doing business for nearly 20 years and provides asphalt paving services to residential, commercial, and highway customers. They're pre-qualified with the West Virginia Department of Highways and have a history of meeting the most demanding schedules. Stone Paving has equipment and personnel that can complete any project and they're committed to providing quality service at a competitive price. When you're planning your next project, call Stone Paving. At the Landing Dental Spa, our goal is to provide quality dental care in a relaxed spa-like atmosphere. Dental chairs with heat and massage, warm neck wraps, and personal TVs make your appointment as stress-free as possible. Located off the Pierpont exit, now accepting new patients of any age. Call 304-594-2200 today and visit our website at www.thelandingdentalspa.com to schedule an appointment. The Landing Dental Spa, a healthy smile with peace of mind. Ed B, do you know why I stopped you? Well, your sticker is dead, wires are out your, coming out of your tires, and I heard your brakes squealing from way back yonder. We need to get to the tire ladies, get in alignment, get the brakes put on this thing, get it inspected, and while you're there, you might as well get your oil changed. And if you don't, next time I see you, you're getting a ticket. Barney, put that bullet away. Rainbow tire, the tire lady takes care of me. Now the buzzer sounds and we get set for uh, second quarter action. And the Knights and the uh, Buccaneers getting set to break the huddle and head back out on the floor. As uh, Preston started strong, got off to a good, fast start, got out to an eight-point advantage. Weren't able to hold it, Terry. The Buccaneers reeled the Knights back in with good play late in the quarter and a lot of second-chance opportunities that the Knights need to try and stop now. Yeah, but we got uh, Jake Livengood on a good start. He's got eight points in that first period. They found him down low several times. 
and let him work his magic. Almost a steal by Lance. Now Lyman gets, gets the steal. He's going to have a run out the other way. He's going up for the dunk, and he's fouled. Yeah, he they, wanted that. Yeah, he wanted that one bad here on senior night, Terry, and they were able to take it away from him. But uh, he will go to the line here, compose himself, and uh, try to get to the old-fashioned way. That was Lily who uh, contested him at the rim. Picks up a personal foul. Lily normally a starter for Buckhannon, but has come off the bench tonight. Jake good on both free throws. Stretches that lead just a little bit for Preston. And Lavin Good in double figures now with that already on the evening. And a miss, but a putback. No box out on that weak side by Corey Piles. Allowed a guy to sneak right in. Buccaneers keep it to a one possession game. Rebello all the way to the hole. A little bit out of control, but uh, he'll go to the line. Rebello very adept at getting that contact at the end of a drive. Something that he's uh, he's worked hard on. That's Monty's first point of the night. A personal foul win against our mysterious 44. Looks like we might have a lane violation. So that one doesn't count. Knights hold on to that three-point lead. Barely a minute gone here in this second period. Buccaneers like that outside shot. And they're going to say the ball out. Last touched by Bowen for Buckhannon. Buccaneers do change some people. And back come our Knights across the timeline. Matt Allen with control. As we see Buckhannon in a heavy man-to-man -man pressure, trying to push out. Now they try to get the ball into Live and Good. He's surrounded by three, fights them off. Up on the boards, good. Great job by Jake muscling that one up. And Preston has 19 now. They could have called a foul at any moment in that series and didn't get anything. Now they try to get it to Rebella. Rebella too strong. Almost goes out the door on the other end of the gym. Yeah, Matt Allen in a little bit of a trap situation there and threw that ball out strong. Threw it past Rebello and into the concourse area. Rebello out front in this 1 3 1 defense. And a turnover, Buckhannon, just what the Knights need here in the second period to stretch that lead. Get the ball to Piles, but he loses the handle. Live and good, fought for it, and then he loses possession of it. Back come the Buccaneers. Drive all the way to the basket. Looked to me like he just lost the handle on the ball, but somehow they retained possession. No one touched him. No inbounds from underneath their basket. Long cross court pass. And get it right at the foul line. 
Shot goes up. That was Bowen. Ball comes in from the official. Looks like they caught Edwards with a push in the back down low. It could have been Bowen over the back, but they give the uh, call the other way. That was a dealer's choice for the official that time. He had plenty to work with. Now John Noah Lockery in the game at the point. Piles drives, kicks out to Lance. Lance is wide open out there, misses the shot. Rebound, Nick Smith up on the glass. Just couldn't get it to go. Good rebound, good hard-fought job by Nick Smith. Go back the other side, they bury a three. That's Logan Hit. Noah trying to protect the ball there. A lot of heavy pressure on him. He gets it to Piles. Piles is bumped. Smith with a turnaround shot, no good. Should have been a foul as Piles drove the lane and we got no call whatsoever. Oh, nice acrobatic move down there on the baseline. A save, they rotate it around and there's another tray and that's gonna bring an immediate timeout as uh, that boosts the Buccaneers into their first lead of the evening. At 20 to 19, they come all the way back twice from the deficit and now take the lead with uh, four minutes and 18 seconds to go here in the first half of play. And Coach Paul Koontz has seen quite enough. Knights only score five points so far in the second period. But the Buccaneers score eight. I'm sure he's going to talk about it. Couple, yeah, the, couple these, calls these didn't single, go our way, yeah, Steve. These single-digit outings are something that uh, Coach Koontz uh, is trying to put an end to. He's trying to impress upon uh, the boys that they have got to play complete quarters, and they've got to string four of them together and turn it into a complete game. They can't be coming out with these single-digit uh, four and six and eight-point uh, outings. It just makes it way too difficult to stay competitive. Knights need help getting it in. They get it to Smith. Smith back to Lockery. The press is on. And we get a foul called finally against Lilly. As he was putting pressure out front. And Lockery has gotten much better at dealing with that. Uh, his, his first taste of it in the Morgantown game at the varsity level uh, was, was clearly terrifying. And uh, now teams that try to press him find that he's capable of handling it. And keeping that ball in play for the Knights. This is the front end of the one and one doesn't hit the rim, so possession over to Buchanan. They spread out the Knights. Find an open man, and now they're beginning to nail those threes from outside. Shepard with his third three of this game. Preston's going to have to extend the defense out a little more whether they want to or not. They're using that 1-3-1, one, one, trying to protect the wings, but they're not getting out quick enough. Shot up by Jake Live and good over the back. It looks like it's going to go out to... <laughs> it's going to go out to Preston. They got a, caught a break there. It looked like Lance came over it's the back, but he got to go to the line. Yeah, actually Lance draws the contact and the foul there somehow, and he will go to the free throw line for the first time tonight. And he misses. And that's a rare occurrence. With Andrew normally a pretty steady free throw shooter. Oh, nice play to get the ball down low for number 34, Cutlip. He scores against Livengood. 
Pressure getting to the Knights once again. Ball turned over. And Nick will take a seat on the bench as uh, Matt Allen comes back in. Lockery goes out. Rebello comes back in. Nice trap down on the baseline set up by Allen and Corey Piles. But the ball gets out to Buchanan. They switch out into a 2-3 now, spread out just a little bit, stop some of that perimeter shooting. Shot from the baseline in and out, but the rebound comes down. Buckhannon just out quicks us to the ball. And the call goes against Monty Rubello. Just didn't get to the ball fast enough. Knights have got to put a body on somebody here down low. Keep them from getting in and getting those rebounds. Live and good with a rebound that time. Good job by Jake. Ball tipped away, headed in the general direction of Corey uh, over there. And Piles will inbound it for Preston now on the offensive end. Lance gets it into live and good. Oh, no foul called. That would have been an automatic foul anywhere else. Yeah, live and good got fairly well hammered on that one. Ball into the Knights. Oh, there was a beautiful play as they found Live and Good cutting to the basket. That was all Matt Allen. Buccaneers have extended their zone out a little bit to deny good shooting opportunities for Piles and Lance. And Allen's that has opened it up inside some. Now a steal. They got it to Ribello up with the left hand. Strong on the boards. Good. Monty Ribello. And the Knights draw to within two. That'll bring a timeout. A minute 29 on the big coastal drilling east clock as we sync things up here. In a good competitive entertaining contest here in the castle, we thought the Knights were going to get on top of this one early and get out to a big lead, but, Terry, they were never, never able to get beyond the 8-9 point mark and twice... Uh, the Buccaneers reeled the Knights in here in this first half, and now Preston fighting and struggling to get back to even with them, down by two. Jake Livengood was 16 so far in his first half. Good senior night start for Jake Livengood. Now some give and go underneath. They find the cutter on the back door. That was number 14, Dawson Lilly. He'll go to the line. Made a nice move down on the baseline. They saw him, got the ball to him. He went up strong, gets fouled, and makes the first free throw. A personal foul goes against Corey Piles, his second. Really good. 27-23. Allen gets the pocket picked. Heatherly just cleaned him and took the ball in for a run out. 
Easy snowbird that time, and Preston can ill afford to give those away. Once again, pressure affecting the Knights. Lance will drive it all the way into the goal. Great job by Andrew Lance to score that basket. Wasn't going to be denied. Even with a little bump at the end, he put it up and scored it. Now Lance almost gets a steal. Him and Allen putting good pressure on out front. Good rebound by Nick Smith. Just reached up there with those long arms and got that tip. But then he turns the ball over. He'd like to have that one back, I'm sure. Yeah, ill-timed pass intending that one for Rebello, who couldn't quite get out of the blocks and get to where that one was aimed, and it gets out over the sideline into the uh, bleachers across the way. I, thought, I think Nick thought he was going to cut more towards the front court. That's going to end the half with the Buccaneers in front by a score of 29 25. Yeah, it's a close four-point contest as we go to the break. And uh, we encourage our viewers to pay special attention during the halftime break. Uh, uh, National Signing Day visited the Hilltop today, Terry, as uh, Olivia Liston signed her national letter of intent to uh, play soccer at Division II Wheeling Jesuit and uh, an all-around great student athlete here at Preston High. Uh, we were there with uh, the hometown TV cameras and had an opportunity uh, to uh, see Miss Liston sign uh, her paperwork in front of her mom and dad, uh, Rodney um, Liston, also her coach for several years and throughout her high school career. So a big day for the Liston family and a uh, big day for uh, that young lady. She's an exceptional athlete, but also an exceptional student, a 4.4 GPA. And uh, folks, I encourage you to stay tuned at halftime. Watch that segment coming up as well as senior night coverage. And then Terry and I will be back with second half action here in the castle coming up next. Did you know it's possible to reverse the effects of heart damage? Start down your road to a healthy heart at Preston Memorial Hospital's Cardiac Rehab Center. We started cardiac rehab here at the hospital, and I have come a long way. Now I can shower, make my own bed, do laundry, cook. I'm looking forward to getting back to being my own self and happy to have my life back. The Cardiac Rehab Center at Preston Memorial Hospital. We put our hearts into making yours stronger. Happy New Year! Kent and Melissa with Delano's Furniture and Mattress. Celebrate the New Year with us by saving big on our double-sided Made in West Virginia mattress sets. Yesterday's quality meets today's technology. A mattress you can flip. It'll last you year after year. Come, Come experience, experience the Delano's difference. The Delano's difference. The Delano's difference. We also have adjustable beds.
simple switch, troubleshooting a problem, a new service, to that backup generator that you'll need in times of emergency. Blake Electric can handle all your electrical needs. They have the experience and knowledge to do it professionally and safely and do the job right the first time. There's been an accident. The emergency has left you with physical trauma and legal issues to deal with. The bills are piling up, and you're overwhelmed. Where do you turn for legal representation? Hi, I'm Paul Eastep. And I'm Steve Schaefer. We're attorneys practicing right here in your home county of Preston. Centrally located on West Main Street in Kingwood, just across from McDonald's, the offices of Eastep and Schaefer are an easy drive from anywhere in Preston County. You don't have to go outside Preston County to hire a lawyer with the know-how, the experience, and the knowledge to represent you fairly in a serious personal injury matter. Call us at East and Schaefer at 329-6003 or visit us on the web at www.eastepschaeferlaw.com. Become part of the family at Preston Family Pharmacy. It's not just their name, it's their philosophy. They treat you like family. Whether you've just left the hospital or a routine checkup, make Preston Family Pharmacy your neighborhood pharmacy your next stop. The friendly professional staff at Preston Family Pharmacy will make sure that you get the time and attention you deserve for all your pharmacy needs. Preston Family Pharmacy is currently accepting all patients. Preston Family Pharmacy, Route 7 across from Walmart, Kingwood. They'll take care of you like family.
Brown's Mill Grocery invites you to stop by for anything you might need. If you're looking for a quick bite, Brown's Mill has buffet-style pizza, fresh subs, and cold drinks. Fill up your tank and your car's tank, too, with quality gasoline. Snacks, cold drinks, gasoline, anything you might need, you'll find at Brown's Mill Grocery. Brown's Mill Grocery at the corner of the Dogtown Road and Route 92. We look forward to seeing you soon at Brown's Mill Grocery. From humble beginnings, Stone Paving has emerged as one of the premier paving companies in the region. Stone Paving has been doing business for nearly 20 years and provides asphalt paving services to residential, commercial, and highway customers. They're pre-qualified with the West Virginia Department of Highways and have a history of meeting the most demanding schedules. Stone Paving has equipment and personnel that can complete any project and they're committed to providing quality service at a competitive price. When you're planning your next project, call Stone Paving. At the Landing Dental Spa, our goal is to provide quality dental care at a relaxed spa-like atmosphere. Dental chairs with heat and massage, warm neck wraps, and personal TVs make your appointment as stress-free as possible. Located off the Pierpont exit, now accepting new patients of any age. Call 304-594-2200 today and visit our website at www.thelandingdentalspa.com to schedule an appointment. The Landing Dental Spa, a healthy smile with peace of mind. Ed B, do you know why I stopped you? Well, your sticker is dead, wires are out your, coming out of your tires, and I heard your brakes squealing from way back yonder. You need to get to the tire ladies, get in alignment, get the brakes put on this thing, get it inspected, and while you're there, you might as well get your oil changed. And if you don't, next time I see you, you're getting a ticket. Barney, put that bullet away. Rainbow. Tire, the tire lady takes care of me. First of all, on behalf of Preston High School Athletic Department and the administration, I want to thank everybody for coming out um, on this historic day and a very important day uh, for this young lady. Um, normally, at this time, I would say, "Okay, coach, would you please take over? We have a unique situation." Dad is the coach. So bear with me. I'm going to try to talk about a few things about this young lady. I'm not going to read everything in the press release I sent to by email to everybody. I'm not going to do that, but we'll mention a few things uh, about her as well. One thing I'm going to start with is not on the paper. What a great young lady she is. I've watched her grow up literally from a little one up to the disadvantage of getting older. Okay, so I've watched her when she watched her sister and literally from probably five, six years old up. So that part's a personal part uh, for me as the person is athletic director of both. And I think sometimes we forget to mention that when we have these signings. Olivia is committing today to Willing Jesuit University to play collegiate um, soccer in the fall of 2018. Willing Jesuit is a Division II school and competes in the Mountain East Conference. She will be attending on both academic and athletic scholarships. She's the finalist for the prestigious Stephen J. Lott Scholarship. Uh, she plans to major in chemistry and free pharmacy. She has played club soccer for nine years. She also has had an outstanding career at Preston High. She scored 59 goals, 39, or 32 assists for an impressive 150 point total. She received Big Ten Conference Midfielder of the Year, Big Ten First Team twice in her career, First Team Region, First Team West Virginia Sports Riders, All State for AAA, Second Team West Virginia High School Coaches Association, All State, All State for AAA, and was selected to play in the North South All Star Game where she scored her 17th career free kick during her senior year. She also was the Golden Boot winner for Preston High for the leading scorer for all four years. Um, she also was selected as Max Preps Preston High School Player of the Year for 2016 and 17. She holds the following school records. Most career free kick goals, most career goals as a midfielder, most career penalty kick goals, and most assists in a single game. She was three-year captain 
for the varsity, but here's the part that's also important. She has a 4.4 GPA. Pretty impressive for what she's done. Yeah. Also, she's a two-year member of the National Honor Society, four-year member, thanks to Roundtable and Key Club. With that said, I didn't read everything, but we want you to know we're proud of you. And at this point, because I'm normally not in here, I want to ask you if you would now sign your national letter of intent to play college soccer at William Jesuit University. So with that said, we'll ask the press to get any questions they want, then you'll do pictures. I thank you. I've got to go to another meeting. And of course, everybody that knows your history, we, we know about Coach Dad over here. What's it going to be like taking the pitch in college and looking over? And I know Mom and Dad will be in the stands all the time, but what's it going to be like the first time you look over at that sideline and he's not there? Uh, I, I do play travel without him being my coach, so um, it's nice to see him up there filming the games because um, I know he'll do a good job and then we can have uh, game talks after uh, afterwards watching it. Um, it is going to be tough not having him there and not, him, not having him push me through every practice and every game to do better and tell me what I need to fix. Um, he's a great guy and I know he'll do great things with the program after I leave. Did you know it's possible to reverse the effects of heart damage? Start down your road to a healthy heart at Preston Memorial Hospital's Cardiac Rehab Center. We started cardiac rehab here at the hospital, and I have come a long way. Now I can shower, make my own bed, do laundry, cook. I'm looking forward to getting back to being my own self and happy to have my life back. The Cardiac Rehab Center at Preston Memorial Hospital. We put our hearts into making yours stronger. Back in the castle for third period action soon to begin. And Terry Cochran has some numbers and the name of the mysterious number 44. Yeah, we finally did find out who 44 is for Buck Cannon. That's Zach White. Well, we tracked him down finally. Uh, mainly, we got outscored again in that second period, Steve, by a 17 to 11 score, and that's where... We stand pretty much at halftime, 29-25. The Knights did battle back right at the end to get back a little closer here in that period. Well, the, the offense has mainly been on the shoulders of Jake Lobbingood, 16 first-half points, and he's been assisted a little bit, but Preston has not been able to create situations that give good looks to Corey Piles or to Andrew Lance. And if he can't shoot from outside, and you depend on Jake to do it all on the inside. They're double and triple teaming him down there. It's not going to be an easy way to come back in a contest and, and get much of a lead. Uh, as much as, as Jake would give it all, uh, I'm afraid that what's going to happen in, in the second uh, half of this contest is going to revolve around uh, foul trouble. Yeah, I believe so too, Steve. Right now for Buck Cannon, Grayson Shepard leads the Bucks with 11. And then after that, they're kind of like the Knights. Nobody has really stepped up past Shepard, and Shepard has three threes to bolster his scores. But they have eight guys that scored. That's the difference. They're getting some work off their bench. Uh, everybody's touching the ball, and they're pretty, playing pretty tight well-manned defense. 
and they've extended their defense out just a little bit, whereas we've allowed their uh, perimeter shooting to go pretty much unchecked and, and give them the opportunity to throw it up there, hoping that they're going to miss. They did early on, but now they've started to make shots from out there. I think we're going to have to extend out and get a hand in somebody's face or at least get a running start at someone uh, out there on the perimeter in order to challenge. Okay, the Knights have the first possession here in the second half, and we can see what they're going to do. They're going to step up the pressure and try to double down on Jake Livengood, and it works. They get the turnover. They're going to make someone from Preston, other than Jake Livengood, beat them in this second half. Preston with good defense. Not allowing penetration by Buchanan. Now they get it down on the blocks. Ball goes up, partially blocked by Live and good, and he comes out of there with it. All right, that was a good defensive uh, turn by Preston. Good job by Corey Powell's over on the far baseline. He lost the handle for just a second and then picked up his dribble and took it in strong and was fouled. Now on the inbounds, Lance takes a long shot. Ribello fights for the ball, but it touches the out-of-bounds line. Turnover, Knights. Matt Allen nearly shook that one loose. There was a scrum on the floor for a second or two. Rebello putting a lot of pressure on. And we get a timeout by Buck Cannon. Don't like what he sees. Now, Rebello and Allen are a dangerous pair out there because they're just trying to create havoc now with the uh, Buck Cannon offense and see if they can force some turnovers and get something going back the other way for Preston and then let the big guy uh, do his thing down in the post. Well, both uh, teams like Bantamweights right now fighting it out. No one can seem to get the upper hand here in this third period. Several turnovers and the score remains the same, 29-25. Bucks tried to get the ball down on the baseline to Edwards. It, uh, he couldn't handle the pass yeah, out of bounds. Tough on the inside. Uh, Preston, again, doing a nice job sealing him off down there. And we've played over a minute and a half with no score. Allen drives in. No good cleanup job. Wipe the glass. Jake Live and good. Call him Mr. Clean tonight. Well, whether it's uh, Jake or somebody off the bench or one of the other starters, somebody's got to get some second-chance opportunities off the misses for Preston. Jake almost causes a personal that time, gets one called on him for a bump, got away with it. These officials have let him go down low tonight. They've been beating and banging pretty hard on both sides of the floor. That was a good set play that time as they got the ball on the blocks to uh, number 34, Cutlip. Lance, and he got, uh, he got bodied up on right there as he went into, into the paint for the layup, but again, no whistle. Heard a whistle, I'm waiting to see who they call. They call that on Jake Livengood for a push. 
Yeah, and that'll be Lavin Good's third, and that's going to immediately bring him to the bench now with just over five and a half to go in the third period. Now a violation on the inbounds. And that's the second time uh, the Buccaneers have done that and turned it over. So the unforced turnover, thank you very much. And Preston's ball facing pressure now. And... Kyle stares down Nick Smith and tries to get the ball into him, but the Buccaneers were waiting on that. It's like watching the quarterback's eyes. You know where he's going to go. Out to Lance. Lance going to take a long one from three. No good. Just cannot get that to drop tonight. Piles will light it up. Boom! Corey Piles finally. A tray falls for the Knights. And that second chance came off the hands of Nick Smith, who got the rebound on the weak side there and kicked it to Piles when he saw him open. Knights, Knights in a man-to-man -man tight defense. Nick kind of kicks it out. And now we're going to get a call. Illegal touch. Not sure what he's called here. The ball will go back to yeah, for a Cannon. moment. For a moment, I thought it was going to be over and back. I did too. Oh well. And if you force that, it's just good defense. <laughs> they didn't call a foul on anybody. They just give the ball to, to Buck Hannon in front of their own bench. Well, now oh, they got. That's got to be offensive. Come on. Yeah, and that's what they call. Heatherly just kind of put his. Well, he dropped the shoulder and swung shoulder. that elbow hard. Trying to create some space there, but right in front of the official, you can't do it that way. Both teams stepping up the pressure here in the second half on defense. Lance all the way the hole up on the glass. Good! Andrew Lance. What a drive. And the nice seesaw back out front. A 32-31 lead by Preston now as they get back on top here for the first time since uh, late in the first half. Man-to-man -man proving to be the ticket here for Preston here in the second half so far. Limiting that three-point shot. We get a call down underneath on Allen. Yeah, Matt Allen shrugs his shoulders as if to say, what else can I do? That's his third personal. Yep. Back in on the blocks, up strong. 34, Brandon Cutliff. They've got to cut him off underneath on that inbounds play. That's two times now. He's gotten wide open right under the basket. Now we get a blocking foul as Nick Smith was driving to get the ball out. They get um, Whitehair with the personal foul. That's his second. Corey Powell's off the glass. Now a strong drive. Shepard wasn't going to be denied, man, once he started down that lane. No, he decided he was going to take a run at uh, sophomore Nick Smith and see if Smith would stand in there. He didn't get quite that far. They called it on Andrew Lance. That's his second personal. Now some give and go. They kick it out for a three. Off the rim, no good. And a jump ball, good job by Nick Smith. He reached in and tied up Shepard, I believe. Yeah, he created a great 50-50 situation there out of what could have been a foul. And a three buried outside by Shepard. Or by Loudon, I believe. 25. 
Lance to drive in again. He's fouled on the way in, but they didn't. They said it was on the floor. Foul was on 24. Shepard. Well, Andrew Lance guarded closely on the perimeter, has decided if he's not going to get shots on the outside and he doesn't have Jake Livengood to throw it to in the post, he's going to take it in his own hands and drive. Piles finds Rebello up with the left hand off the glass, and he's fouled. Nice entry pass by Corey Piles to find Monty Rebello cutting in the paint. Little shake and bake, got the ball up on the glass, and he's going to go to the line. Tie this ball game up with this free throw, but he missed. A jinxed him. Nearly snatched out of there by Smith, but the Buccaneers control it. Now Rebello with the rebound and a reach in foul. Going to go against Lilly, and I think that's his third personal foul. Kind of got caught. Rebello turned around, and Lilly was right in his face. Wasn't much Lilly could do either. It just was a bang, bang play. That'll be the fourth foul. Fourth foul on Lilly. So he does go to the bench. More importantly, the Knights inch a little closer to a shooting situation on the fouls, and that can become a big one for Preston. Little step back by Andrew Lance, just inside the three. Give him a deuce. Two minutes in this third period. Almost a steal by Allen, but right back comes the Bucks. Missed the layup, and now we got a breaking Rebello down the floor, and he loses the handoff. Nice play by number 12. Whitehair to get that ball back coast to coast, and he gets fouled with a minute 39 remaining, and will go to the line. Well, he took the long way around. He got the full castle tour coming out of that far corner, brought it all the way over here, chased by Rebello and Smith, crossed over in front of the uh, scorer's table, and then drove it hard to the rim. Now the Knights have three in foul trouble. Allen, Piles, and Livengood. All with three. Livengood already on the bench. Tie ball game at 38. Couldn't ask for a better game in the castle tonight. No, this one on senior night uh, here at home in the uh, castle finale. Uh, well, not the Castle finale. We'll have one more rescheduled game with North Marion. But uh, in what would have been the Castle finale, this is a classic. Got to have some help. They finally get the ball into Lance. Lance drives in. He's being really pressured hard out front. Lockery with it now. Changes hands. Now he drives down the hole. And if that's not a foul, I don't know what it is. 33 just grabbed him and put him to the ground. Bowen, ball goes out of bounds. They say that the Knights retain possession. I don't know what these officials are looking at right now. Smith with the shot, but the whistle comes before he gets it off. And now we've got. Now we get a technical call. A conference. On Heatherly. They were watching him all the way. Not sure what he was complaining about. Now a double. No, technical. he's gone. And he's gone. That is, oh boy. And I'll tell you what, this is bordering on getting a little crazy as they're warning the coach.
Heatherly said something, and now the official is walking the Buckhannon coaching staff back into their box. And he's making no bones about it. Yeah, Heatherly uh, got tagged for the foul. He didn't like it, started complaining. And that brought out the first technical. Well, he wouldn't quit. As he was coming off the floor, he had to yap two or three more things. Yeah, to that's, uh, I'm surprised. That's when you send one of the assistants and say, go get him. Yeah, they didn't uh, pull him off the floor. <laughs> Someone should have grabbed him quickly because that will put him out of the next game, I believe. That, uh, yeah, and that can potentially be uh, uh, very, very big for the Buccaneers. So the Knights should have a chance at a four-point play, plus get the ball back. This could be a big swing here late in the third period. You know, Preston, no stranger to this sort of thing. I mean, Jake Livengood, everybody knows. He, he's kind of a mercurial player, and he's been known to, to get a tee once in a while. But uh, you you got to... You got to say that got out of control very swiftly. Well, you could see the Buccaneers. They were creeping and creeping and creeping and pushing and pushing and pushing. The play right before that, they grabbed uh, Monty Ribello as they went down the lane. They just basically grabbed him and threw him down. So there goes Heatherly. He leaves the game and will go to the locker room. So now the officials, we're not sure what they're doing. They called him back out of the locker room. And now they're talking to him. Now, I'm not sure if the coach said you didn't explain to the young man what he did or what's going on here. Now the official is walking him back across. Not sure what this is all about. Of course, in the meantime. Well, I, I'm not either because you get two technicals. Typically, you're escorted uh, off the floor. Well, I would think Coach Koontz would be out there asking for an explanation. Well, you know, possibly, but at this point, I think he's just going to let the officials do what the officials do. And and being a former official himself, he's not going to stick his head in the lion's den <laughs> unnecessarily. I guess he's not required to leave the floor. In high school. Okay. Well, we're going to look that one up later. Anyways, Lance will go to the line, shoot some free throws. Oh, short with the first. Of course, that brings a rousing applause from the Buckhannon people. No, I, I expect nothing less. That's, that's fine. Okay, and now let's ice the shooter a little bit and let the officials talk some more. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what the officiating conference is all about here. Now they're going to talk to Coach Koontz. Maybe they need more donuts in the uh, maybe hospitality room. Not real sure. Now we got another timeout. Now we've put Lockery to the line. Lance was one for two out of that. <laughs> I'm confused. I don't know about you. I'm confused. So Lance comes back again. So Yeah, now. I wasn't sure why we were changing shooters. Well, there should have been a double technical foul. So Well, but plus those, those are dead ball fouls, so you can have whoever you want shoot them. That's right. I think they were bringing Lockery out to shoot the free throws that he gets too, but he didn't get that. They needed to finish off the. Well, three of four for Lance. Okay. Now Lockery will probably go to the line. Probably not. <laughs> I'm not real sure what that was all about. Now I think they're arguing over whether it's uh, more free throws or Possession. the ball. Or both. Okay. I think they've decided they're going to put uh, Nick Smith to inbound for Preston. And now the Knights with a 41-38 lead. Now, I can tell you right now, I will bet a bottom dollar this is going to get really physical from here on out. Really quickly. And if these officials don't get a handle on it, it will get out of control. Well, the officials have a handle on something because they were all over it. 
for about five minutes there. That, that's exactly what's happening. They're putting the pressure on really strong right now. Inside the last minute of period number three, and here's a takeaway, and Lance backs it out. Little pushing action. As they're putting hands all over the players. They call a tie-up, and I never saw the Buckhannon player ever have his hand on the ball. Possession arrow to the Knights. Well, Preston better be ready because they're going to be allowed to push and shove. And a nice feed to Smith. Good! Good job by John Noah Lockery to follow, find a wide open Nick Smith. Long tray outside by Whitehair as things heat up at the end of this third period. Now we're going to get a foul, reaching in. Now that comes with 13 and a half on the clock. That was Whitehair. That's going to put Lance back on the line where he's quickly become no stranger to making free throws tonight. Yes. Four for five since stepping to the charity stripe. And he rolls that one over the rim, drops it in, tickles the net. Down in the corner, baseline shot at the buzzer, no good. As the Knights take a 45-41 lead from the third period. And we'll be back right after this with fourth period action at the castle. Happy New Year! Kent and Melissa with Delano's Furniture and Mattress. Celebrate the New Year with us by saving big on our double-sided Made in West Virginia mattress sets. Yesterday's quality meets today's technology. A mattress you can flip. It'll last you year after year. Come, Come experience, experience the Delano's difference. difference. The Delano's difference. The Delano's difference. We also have adjustable beds. From a simple switch, troubleshooting a problem, a new service, to that backup generator that you'll need in times of emergency, Blake Electric can handle all your electrical needs. They have the experience and knowledge to do it professionally and safely and do the job right the first time. There's been an accident. The emergency has left you with physical trauma and legal issues to deal with. The bills are piling up, and you're overwhelmed. Where do you turn for legal representation? Hi, I'm Paul Easton. And I'm Steve Schaefer. We're attorneys practicing right here in your home county of Preston. Centrally located on West Main Street in Kingwood, just across from McDonald's, the offices of Eastep and Schaefer are an easy drive from anywhere in Preston County. You don't have to go outside Preston County to hire a lawyer with the know-how, the experience, and the knowledge to represent you fairly in a serious personal injury matter. Call us at East and Schaefer at 329-6003 or visit us on the web at www.eastepschaeferlaw.com. Become part of the family at Preston Family Pharmacy. It's not just their name, it's their philosophy. They treat you like family. Whether you've just left the hospital or a routine checkup, make Preston Family Pharmacy your neighborhood pharmacy your next stop. The friendly professional staff at Preston Family Pharmacy will make sure that you get the time and attention you deserve for all your pharmacy needs. Preston Family Pharmacy is currently accepting all patients. Preston Family Pharmacy, Route 7 across from Walmart, Kingwood. They'll take care of you like family. Brown's Mill Grocery invites you to stop by for anything you might need. If you're looking for a quick bite, Brown's Mill has buffet-style pizza, fresh subs, and cold drinks. Fill up your tank and your car's tank, too, with quality gasoline. 
Snacks, cold drinks, gasoline, anything you might need, you'll find at Brown's Mill Grocery. Brown's Mill Grocery at the corner of the Dogtown Road and Route 92. We look forward to seeing you soon at Brown's Mill Grocery. From humble beginnings, Stone Paving has emerged as one of the premier paving companies in the region. Stone Paving has been doing business for nearly 20 years and provides asphalt paving services to residential, commercial, and highway customers. They're pre-qualified with the West Virginia Department of Highways and have a history of meeting the most demanding schedules. Stone Paving has equipment and personnel that can complete any project, and they're committed to providing quality service at a competitive price. When you're planning your next project, call Stone Paving. At the Landing Dental Spa, our goal is to provide quality dental care at a relaxed spa-like atmosphere. Dental chairs with heat and massage, warm neck wraps, and personal TVs make your appointment as stress-free as possible. Located off the Pierpont exit, now accepting new patients of any age. Call 304-594-2200 today and visit our website at www.thelandingdentalspa.com to schedule an appointment. The Landing Dental Spa, a healthy smile with peace of mind. Ed B, do you know why I stopped you? Well, your sticker is dead, wires are out your, coming out of your tires, and I heard your brakes squealing from way back yonder. You need to get to the tire ladies, get an alignment, get the brakes put on this thing, get it inspected, and while you're there, you might as well get your oil changed. And if you don't, next time I see you, you're getting a ticket. Barney, put that bullet away. Rainbow. Tire, the tire lady takes care of me. All right, here we come back in Kingwood for the final quarter of this one, and it's a 45 41 advantage for Preston as we make the turn and go down the home stretch. But the Knights uh, are going to be in kind of a chippy battle the rest of the way, I have a feeling, Terry. Yes, this is going to be pressure, 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 pressure here in this final period. Well, both of these teams have a lot on the line uh, in terms of what finishing third or fourth in conference play means to seeding. Open shot from the baseline, no good. And that, if nothing else, has them fired up here tonight. And they call a personal foul with an elbow on live and good. He's just trying to keep people off of him. They are all over his back. But they tag him, and that's his fourth personal. We can't afford to lose Jake live and good here in this final period. Yeah, quickly he's got four, and uh, I don't know what the strategy from Coach Coons will be. Let him go, let him play it out as far as he can, uh, can go here, or will he elect to take him out at the next stop and play? and save him for uh, late in the game. Well, we outscored him 19 to 12 in that period, so that was a big quarter for our Knights. Well, and a lot of that from the free throw line, courtesy of Andrew Lance. And that could be Dawson Lilly's fifth personal foul, if that's who they call it on. Lance drove the baseline, gets a shot up on the glass, and I believe that he. That is five. That is number five for Dawson Lilly, and he will step out and sit down. All right, so that uh, that is two out for the Buccaneers now. But they've been deep on their bench tonight already. Logan Hitt comes back into the game. He's played well in that first period. He hit a big three to, to actually stretch that lead for him. Yeah, much like the Knights, uh, the Buccaneers, not afraid to go to the bench, not afraid to go down to the level of, of uh, playing some sophomores. And they've got some talented sophomores, uh, just as Preston does. Oh, rolls around the rim and falls uh, in. You could be looking at uh, the beginnings of a real rivalry over the next two, three seasons, Harry. To me, that personal foul should have went against number five. 
who initiated that contact. Rebello had his hands straight up in the air, did nothing. The Buchanan's coach is well, he's going get, crazy he, down here on he's the sidelines. He's getting a little warning. He's not happy. He's not happy with the calls. And uh, he, he's a little fired up, and coaches get that way sometimes. And it rolls around up he on got, the glass. He got the bounce and the roll on that one. He's, yes. he's, he's all done. The luck's going. He used it all on that shot. Logan hit. Hands both. Now the pressure's on. Full court pressure. Knights have got to be able to break this. They get it to Lance. Lance back. To Allen. Allen across the timeline, switches to the left hand, going all the way to the hole, and he's fouled as he's pushed, trying to get the ball to Jake Livengood. That's a nice job by Allen to keep control of that one. Uh, did a good job fending off the uh, man guarding him, using his body to good advantage, and he gets to the line here now, and Matt Allen has been working really, really hard to improve his free throw shooting. Free throws will come down to a win this game or lose this game scenario before this is all over. With. Absolutely. It's going to be decided at the line, if anywhere. This is the second. But, oh, Livengood had a shot at the rebound. He had to back off, afraid of getting that fifth personal foul. Now a fight down low. They know Livengood can't really – be forceful in there. No, he did a good job on the initial shot, just kind of changing uh, changing the shot a little and denying a good look there. Rebello yeah. gets tagged. His third personal. Brandon cut up to the line. This is the second. He's two for four from the line. We want to put him on there the rest of the way. Corey Piles all the way up on the glass. Good. Corey Piles. What a drive. Corey's been a little quiet on the offensive end tonight. Good to see him fire up here. Now a rebound by Lance, and he's just pummeled. And that's 24 Shepard who come flying in. May collided with Andrew Lance, and that will put Lance back to the charity stripe with six minutes and 27 seconds to go in this contest. And Lee. the Buccaneers trying to put some pressure on the ball there, Terry. Not a, not a bad move, but the sophomore a little inexperienced in that situation, and that's not a foul you want to give here with six and a half to go, and you're 60 feet from the rim, and now you let Andrew Lance walk down there and put up a couple of uncontested shots that uh, he's going to make. Nine for ten from the charity stripe in the third and fourth period is Andrew Lance keeping the Knights out with the lead, 52-45. Staying in that 2-3 matchup zone. As they came back out of the man-to-man, -man, they were in foul trouble. That really helped them in that third period, Steve, getting into that man-to-man -man defense. It limited the three-point shots. Loose ball, rebound, up, and a score. For, I believe that was um, Cutlip. Another big opportunity basket there for the Buccaneers. Lance drives in. Down towards the blocks, and we've got the officials conferring, and they're going to say he walked with the ball. Not exactly happy with that. He was that's being a, hacked as he was walking. Yeah, that's with the a ball. rare occurrence for him to travel with the ball in that situation, but be that as it may, 52 47 Preston, just over five and a half to go. They've missed a lot of reach-in fouls both ways tonight, to me, I believe. Up on the glass, left wide open. Cutlip. 
Livinger gets the ball stripped. Here we go. Another run out for Buck Cannon. They're putting the pressure on. But he couldn't handle the pass. Edwards lets it trickle off his chest out of bounds to the Knights. That's a big turnover, Steve, with five minutes left in this game. They could have really closed the gap. But instead, a turnover gives the ball back to Preston. Now they fight to get the ball in bounds. They get it into Lance. His pocket's picked by Height. Or hit. And he has to foul. Turnovers beginning to pile up on Preston here at the end of this game. Yeah, they've got to uh, keep their wits about them. Not get, uh, not get excited here. Ten fouls each way. Everybody's going to shoot from here on out. Going to shoot two. And this is the front. Logan hit. This is both. Big rebound. Jake Live and Good. Every possession that Live and Good can give the Knights on either end from here on in. Got the ball into Ribello. His shot was blocked by Whitehair. Now to Lance. He's going to fire one up from three. Misses everything. But somehow, the ball goes out to the Knights. Well, last touched evidently off the fingertips of, uh, I believe, maybe Holden Edwards down there, number 15. Unless that shot was partially blocked that we didn't see. And now a steal. Whitehair takes it all the way the other way. Another big turnover. Knights are unraveling here. Yeah, all of a sudden, it's a one-point contest with Yet half the uh, quarter to go as we uh, wind down to the 427 mark. Back to Lyman Good. He drives in. And that's going to be Jake's fifth personal foul. Called him for an offensive foul. Yeah, we knew it was a matter of time, and he made the strong move there, as he has several times this evening. And uh, this time he gets tagged for the player control violation. Jake's not happy as he comes to the sidelines, and uh, Paul Kuhn's not real happy with that call considering the fact that they've been letting them play all evening long on both ends of the floor. It, it's been called pretty evenly on both ends, uh, or non-called, as it were. Jake leaves the floor with 18 points total. He only gained two points here in this second half. Yeah, he had did 16 uh, in the first half. He did a pretty good evening's work in the first half and could have had a career night here tonight had he been unfettered by uh, by fouls and been able to go down the stretch uh, as strong as he did early in uh, the contest. But he gives it his all, and he finishes out here 18 on the evening, but four minutes and 21 seconds short of a full game. And uh, that makes it a tough situation for Preston. Now they've got the uh, they've got the quickness and the length of Nick Smith to put in there, uh, but less experience with the sophomore in play. And I'm sure that they're going to challenge uh, him tremendously in the post. They also bring in Alec Goff, senior help out in this situation. They get the ball in long and a push off. The Bucks get away with that. Down one, working around the perimeter, looking for that three point shot and there it comes. No good, but a, nobody inside to rebound. Cutlip just has his way in the paint as the Bucks take the lead now, 53-52. And a turnover right in front of the bench. Oh, 
ball actually came off of one of the uh, Buccaneers, but we didn't get the call. Everything going against the Knights now. Monty Ribello, and that's his fifth, fourth personal foul. We knew what was going to happen after that. Uh, <clears throat> they took the young man out of the game for Buck Hannon. The Buck Hannon coaches told him to step it up, yep, the put body, the heavy pressure on. Yep, the body started banging together. And from that point on, the Knights have they, lost they, the edge. Yeah, they've struggled. Down three. Plenty of time left in this one, though. They've just, again, got to keep possession of the ball in the tough situations. Matt Allen with the three. No good. Mrs. Smith with the rebound. And a bump will put Smith to the line. Good job by Nick Smith to track that ball down. And Edwards had no choice but to foul him on that far sideline. Oh, first one rims out. And Smith takes a long look at that one. Rare for Smith to miss two in that fashion, but he put it up a little quick. And the Knights get nothing from that possession. Well, they're going to let Edwards just turn around and put it in. No one contested him from inside the foul line. And Paul, Paul Koontz has seen enough. Timeout with 2.45 on the big board. And the Knights in a little trouble here now as they have let this one uh, go the other way. And, and usually physical play doesn't bother Preston uh, over much. But uh, with Jake Lavengood going out and some others in foul trouble, I think uh, this game has gotten into Preston's head just a little bit going down the stretch. They got to put that away, put it behind them, and come out here and fight hard for this last two minutes and 45 seconds. So far, we've been outscored 14 to seven in this final period. After turning in a great third period performance, uh, the Knights have gone flat on the offensive end here, committed some unforced turnovers and um, had a couple calls that didn't go their way. And it has all added up to a big comeback here on the road for the Buccaneers. Well, we've let the bullies in the house, and they took over. That's just the way it works. You got to get strong. You got to get tough. Got to match muscle for muscle. Lance in the lane. He kicks it out to Piles. Piles will take one. Boom! A needed three-pointer for Corey Piles. Downtown. And that comes quickly and makes it, a, a once again, a one-possession uh, contest. Now the Knights step it back out to a man-to-man, -man, and I think that's what was the best defense for them. Oh, now we get a quick foul against called against Corey Piles for a reach. I th but I'd rather see that than see him let open shots go from 12 feet. It's Corey's fourth personal. We need him to stay for the rest of the game. Yep, the Knights need his shooting. Oh. 
Over the back, but they didn't call it. Rebello comes out of there. Has the rebound. Now we find Lance wide open the other way. Lays it up. Good. Andrew Lance from Corey Piles. A five-point swing by the Knights, and it's a one-point contest, 58-57, as we go inside the final two minutes. I like this man-to-man. I think they played better in this man-to-man. They moved their feet better on defense. It worked well for them in that third period. If they can stay out of foul trouble. Rebello chasing Shepard. Shepard hits Matt Allen in the face, but Nick Smith with the steal. He's going to take it all the way to the hole, lays it up on the glass, no good, gets the rebound, and is fouled. Matt Allen was hurt as he got an elbow on a swipe down on the other end of the floor, went down to the floor. The play continued. Nick Smith grabbed a, uh, a steal. Just sure will. Took it all the way to the hoop. Yep, spinning, driving, wouldn't be denied. Got the ball up on the rim where it danced around and came off. He got it again and fouled on the putback with a minute 18 to go. And Allen struggling to get up the floor. Big three free throw from Nick Smith. Ties this game at 58. And now the sophomore has the lead in his hands. John Noah Lockery steps in for the Knights as Smith cans the second free throw. Knights up one. Man to man by the Knights. Shepard was out of control going down the lane, and they just call foul. Yeah, they screened uh, Smith off of him, and he uh, comes off the screen and just goes down the lane just willy-nilly. And that's going to take Piles out of the game as they call the fifth personal foul on Corey Piles. Golf back in. Yeah, first free throw is a miss, so it's no better than a tie at this point. And now we've got another zebra conference. They've been good the, at that. The officials get together here. One oh six left in what must must be described as the best game we've covered in the castle uh, for boys varsity all season long, Terry. It's been entertaining. All right, now they're going to confer with the shooter. Giving instructions yeah, to all the players. We don't know what's going on. Okay, now they've called a lane violation. So they're going to give him two more shots. <laughs> Where this came from, I so, don't know. So he misses the first. I didn't see anybody move. And he rattles the second one home. Now it's a tie. Well, let's give him three yeah. to make two. Yep, it's ABA rules. I guess. And he does. All right, and that's going to bring an immediate timeout. And... Coach Koontz looks appropriately livid at that uh, lane violation call. It'll be interesting to get the uh, description of that from his viewpoint oh, yeah, on yeah. the coach's show. I, I don't understand the call. Really don't, unless he said one of the Preston players stepped in late to the lane. Well, but that I, was way after I could the shot. Have, I could have missed it, but I didn't see anybody's feet move on the shot. And the ball came off, and then somebody moved and went and got it. But that's not a lane violation on a, on a dead ball miss. Well, we've got all sophomores 
Andrew Lance is our best scoring threat in the game, other than Nick Smith. Lockery will have to get the ball inbounds to one of these guys, and they get it into Alec Goff. Goff gets it back to Lockery, and we're under a minute. Knight should probably play for the last shot, and Koontz will take a timeout. And I don't think that the offense was rotating. People weren't moving the way Paul Koontz wanted them to. He also took a good look at what the Buccaneers were doing defensively. And uh, it, it, it's kind of the inverse up at, uh, up at Wheeling Park. The Knights came down the floor at the end of regulation with the ball. And Wheeling Park was sort of in a state of confusion looking around. So Koontz doesn't call the timeout. He waves the boys on. Andrew Lance with a near miss of what would have been the game winner in regulation and they go to overtime. Here tonight, he's going to use his timeouts. He's going to try to control the situation. 54 seconds, a long time to pass this ball around against uh, the Buccaneers. Trailing by one, if the Knights can go for a quick score here and get back on top, then I think they need to apply some pressure to the ball and see if they can force the Buccaneers into a turnover. And they've done it a couple of times. Even on, uh, even on strange inbound plays. Well, we've got to watch because they're going to put a lot of pressure on the ball. We've seen this kind of thing happen before and it not go in the favor of the Knights, but they do get it in. Lockery to Lance. Lance takes his time. He's trying to find someone down low. Lockery's going to drive. No, that's Lance down on the baseline. A floater, no good, but a rebound. Nick Smith gets it to Golf, and we're going to get a foul. As Golf was bumped. Now Golf was driven to his knees. Of course, the Buccaneers don't like the call. But Alec Golf goes to the line with 35 seconds. And calmly nailed the front of this two shot foul. Back in comes Matt Allen. Well, they won Allen's speed defensively. Now we're into some more discussions, and we've even got the uh, <laughs> AD here at Preston involved. Not sure what's yeah, going on with Bruce that. Bruce is not going to like that. And he comes to the scoring table, maybe. I he may know. be about to make an announcement to the students. And it's good. One point lead, 61-60, 30 seconds. Timeout, Buccaneers. Good job by Alec Goff to the walk to the line and just drill two free throws. Yeah, that's under a lot of pressure and a young man who's not – in that situation uh, over much, we should say. And on the season, he comes out here on senior night and scores probably the two biggest points of his career right there to give the Knights the late lead. Now on this far sideline, some of the officials, they're, they're talking to fans now. They've, they've letting themselves get out of control. <laughs> Oh, boy. You know, it's been an interesting and intriguing evening here in the castle. Very entertaining. And uh, one for the books, you might say. All in this uh, rebuilding year. And first season for uh, Paul Kuntz at the helm of the Knights. And if anything else, he's going to go home and write in his coach's diary that this was an interesting one. Well, I can tell you where the ball's going. It's going to number 34. He's been the workhorse here in this second half, Brian, Braden Cutlip. Just a sophomore, but 6'3", uh, and uh, got a good head on his shoulders. Nick, Sees the floor well. Nick Smith's got the task of trying to keep him away from the basket. Once it's in his hands, he's going to drive hard, and there he goes. 
All the way to the hole, puts it up on the glass. Rebound, Smith. And another call goes against the Knights, and I don't know what he called. Smith comes down with the rebound. Lance was on his backside, and they turned the ball over to Buckhannon. Now over the back call, doesn't get called. They flip it down, and a block! Rebello with the block! With 10 seconds remaining, Rebello out of nowhere makes a big block, saves an easy basket. A circus shot, no good, put back, put back again, good with four seconds. Unbelievable. 2.8 on the clock, and the Buccaneers get what seems like 19 chances. Four seconds. Should be four seconds on that clock. What an unbelievable game. Yeah, and an unbelievable turn of events. The Knights down there battling. Smith with the rebound, and I can't foresee oh. any scenario other than stepping on the line, and out of bounds wasn't the call. No. I can't see any scenario where that ball uh, doesn't like belong he, to Preston. It like he called a foul on Andrew Lance on his own man. But <laughs> it would have been a shooting foul. <laughs> Yeah, good call. Was he saying that the two Knights had uh, uh, I don't know what simultaneous was. possession of the ball? What do you call it? I guess. But Lance never had his hands on it. Well, I, again, that will be an interesting description. They're trying to add time. I don't know what they're doing now. Well, the new clock is a little bit of a mysterious contraption to our scorekeepers, and they work hard trying to um, get that thing in sync, and, and, and we work hard trying to keep up with it at times. Um, there should be about four seconds, 3.9, 4.1, somewhere in that range. Right now we've got uh, either 13.2 or 1.32. <laughs> Uh, it's supposed to be up there on the board, and they're working diligently to uh, correct that. And uh, the officials are chiming in with some suggestions. Oh, they've been doing that all night. Now we have 632 on the board. And we continue. 62-61. Some small amount of time remaining in regulation. <laughs> we, as of yet, know not what that is. But the officials still conferring with the scorekeepers, and they've got the AD over here. And Bruce is getting the glasses out, so this is not good. No. as they will now try to cajole the uh, new hardware into compliance with what uh, the scorekeepers and the officials are asking for. They're almost ready to. All right, now we have three seconds on the clock. Now it's 2.8. That's where we started, wasn't I, it? Yeah, we were at 2.8. I still think it should be 4. I do, too. They may have hit the undo button just to get back to this point. They're still discussing it down here. Knights are still in the huddle. You know, they talk about icing the kicker, um, to use a football analogy. Any way you look at it. Uh, across the way, officials are... Uh, talking to other officials. Talking to other officials who are observing the contest. Now we have... 4.5. The official time, 4.5 on the clock. So we'll sync up with that. Knights will have the ball. Must go full court. 
and either put it in the bucket or draw the foul. I would like to see the foul. Time to do it if they move. Of course, Buchanan's going to press tightly. Okay, here we go. Lance is going to drive the ball down. 1.8. Oh, he loses his feet, and that's the end of the game. Never gets a chance to put the shot up. Knights come up a point short as Andrew Lance slips on the floor here at the end of the senior night contest, and Preston loses a heartbreaker, 62 yeah, to 61. Uh, a game that was completely within the Knights' ability to win, and they got uh, a little a little discombobulated. Played a little fast and loose going down the stretch yep. after uh, Jake Lavengood fouls out with uh, a little over four minutes to go. And uh, that final four minutes, ups and downs for the Knights. Credit them for a furious comeback at the end. And they get the lead. They do a good job at the free throw line. Um, everybody played their role uh, to a T, but Buchanan able to come away a, at the end with an unbelievable series of possessions down here on their offensive board. And uh, they finally get a put back on the fourth, fifth, sixth attempt, and it's 62-61. Highlight for Preston, you know, on senior night, Jake Lavengood scores 18. Um, if he'd had 20, <laughs> it would be a different game. Yeah, yeah. I'm but not putting that all on Jake. Uh, you know, it, it goes from top to bottom. If uh, if uh, super sophomore Nick Smith had uh, had made two more free throws, yep. um, it would have been 63-62. But um, in the second half, Andrew Lance, he turned it on. He ends up being the high scorer of the game. With 19, most of those came from the free throw line. Yeah, Lance became determined that uh, once Livengood was out of the picture and wasn't there on the post to throw that ball to, um, they were going to overguard uh, Nick Smith, and so he did a nice job taking control and driving that ball numerous times. And uh, if he didn't get points uh, from the floor, he got them from the line in bushels tonight and nearly lifted the Knights to the victory. Yeah, he was 10 for 11 from the free throw line in the third and fourth period. Ended up with 19. Corey Powell's contributes. He gets himself in double figures with 12. And everyone else follows after that. So a, a great uh, a great job by our Knights under some adverse conditions, some uh, questionable officiating calls that, uh, you know, it went both ways. You can't say it doesn't. No, I thought the, the game was called um, e equally ineffectively on both ends <laughs> of the floor, I think. Is way. I'm, I not like trying to, that I'm not trying to pick on the officials, Terry. I'm not. These guys are good guys, and they get paid darn little for coming out here and doing a yeah, tough that's job. Right. And they see things that we don't see. Their perspective is different than ours, but, you know, it comes with the territory. And uh, so, fellas, if you're out there watching this, you know where the mistakes were, and, and we know where our mistakes are. And yeah. you, can, you can yell back at us. That's, that's okay. Right. Um, but, uh, again, a classic here in the castle in this rebuilding season. Again, this would have been our final uh, regular season contest, but we've got a snow makeup date coming on the 20th when the North Marion Huskies will come yapping up the mountain and uh, yet to be seen if they'll have to bring the sled dogs or just the regular dogs. But uh, we'll be back for one more, so watch for that. Get out here. Good crowd tonight. Uh, good participation in the student section, and we thank everybody for turning out and for tuning in here on your hometown TV station. Uh, Bob Meisner, our technical director, camera operations for the night, Terry Cochran and I. Uh, I'm Steve Blake, and for our executive producer back at the Mountain Digital Ranch, Denise Blake, we wish you all a very, very good evening. Stay tuned for more as we'll be bringing you the Preston County Middle School Championships uh, here just within the next few days. Uh, watch us on YouTube, watch us on the channel, but watch us wherever you can. Until we see you again out there somewhere in the big world, we say good night. <laughs>